So what exactly is cellular bonding then? Uh, sure. It's So cellular bonding is the idea to take um, public cell phone networks as a signal path to get video back. So if you think back to the kind of original days of what was called ENG or electronic news gathering, there was two styles of it then. One was satellite, and you probably, if you're old enough like me, you can think back to when you saw a news van that had the big giant satellite dish on the roof. Of course. And then, and then the other is microwave, which is still sometimes used. And that's the news van that's got the big hydraulic pylon that comes up and, and puts the smaller dish, but very high up because it has to have line of sight directly to the next tower uh, to get the signal back. And both methods have a lot of restrictions. They're expensive, obviously, with satellite time. They can only work from certain geographic areas. You'd have to figure out where to park the van so that the skyscraper wasn't blocking you from the next tower and stuff like that. So what the uh, founders of LiveView had was this idea of like, well, now everybody's got a cell phone in their pocket. This is back in the days of 3G. Uh, how can we get a, a high quality video signal back over the cell phone connection? And cell phones barely did data back then. They did data through modulation, not as a you know native data networks. Um, and the bit rate you could get was very limited. So their idea was, well, what if we took a bunch of them and stacked them all together? So if I can only get 600 kilobits out of one phone, what if I took five phones and then I could get maybe three megabits per second and, and maybe that's enough to to get the video out? So they worked on a device that would encode video as H.264 at that time, um, break it up into its you know component audio and video little packets, and then send those over multiple uh, signals all at once, multiple cell phone connections all at once, and then reassemble them on the far side so that you get a reliable signal out of it. And they, you know, over in iterations of the technology found, okay, well, we can't just send it all evenly because out of six cell phone connections, two are working great and two aren't working so great. And so if we send the same amount of data over each one, it's not going to work. So then they began to develop this algorithm, uh, which I was just referring to that, you know, senses how each connection is doing multiple times per second and makes a decision of, Let's send more data over connection number one, which is just doing fantastic, and less data over connection number two, which seems to be having trouble. But let's test connection number two every now and then to see when it comes back. Because one thing that we've learned over the years about cellular networks is the behavior is unpredictable. Just because you happen to be having a great connection right then doesn't mean that it doesn't change when a truck drives past and blocks your line of sight to the tower or 40 other people all of a sudden take their phone out of their pocket and get on the same tower or, you know, just... Uh, you know, peculiarities of the way wireless networks behave. So it resamples multiple times per second, makes decisions about where to send the audio and video data based on, you know, how the networks are actually performing. And with the goal of being a much more consistent total bit rate and delivery, reliable delivery to the far side. Um, but by doing that, by changing around, you might see it fluctuate quite a bit over the course of a long stream, how much data is sent over connection one versus connection two, connection three. And then, you know, it kind of goes without saying in my mind, but maybe, you know, some um, people that are not used to the technology might not get it right away. The idea being that out of like uh, N number of connections in the unit, you're splitting those across multiple carriers. So you've got some Verizon, some AT&T, some T-Mobile, some Sprint before those with the same company. And, and then that way you've got more redundancy as well. If some, even if in a catastrophic thing, like somebody's tower goes down or, Somebody accidentally cuts the Verizon, you know, fiber uh, as happens every, you know, once every six months or something. You, you, then your signal still goes out over the other carriers, and, and you still get a good, reliable signal out. 